an introduction to imaginary numbers. This video tutorial can be found on our website, mathandwarehouse.com slash imaginary, where you'll find a bunch of other goodies, including a free worksheet with an answer key and an imaginary number simplifier that will reduce any power of I and some other goodies. Okay, the tutorial is going to follow these four steps. First, we're going to, I'm going to give a brief overview of imaginary and imaginary numbers, what they are. Then we're going to look at how you could simplify powers of i. We should, by the end of, um, of this, easily be able to simplify i to any power. And then how do we simplify pure imaginary numbers? And by that I mean something like this. And lastly, a few quick calculator tips on how you can do a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about today with most graphing calculators. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about imaginary numbers in general. All right, so let's first just introduce imaginary numbers and talk about them. Imaginary num the imaginary number i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. That is i. And imaginary numbers in general look things like this. They look like the square root of negative 3, or they look like the square root of negative 125, You'll also see imaginary numbers written like this, 3i, 4i. Right? So the something that we're going to learn later is how we can simplify things like this. Before we do that, let's just look at what happens when we define i to be the square root of negative 1. Let's talk about what i squared would be. i squared, of course, would be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Right? So that's going to be the number negative 1, right? Just like the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to equal 3, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is negative 1. Therefore, i squared is negative 1. Now let's think about what i to the third is. Remember your rules of exponents i to the third is i to the second times i. And we know that i squared is negative 1 from the thing we just did. Therefore, i cubed can be rewritten as negative i. i to the fourth. We're going to use that same rule of exponents to, to rewrite this as i squared times i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1, right? So this is the same as negative 1 times negative 1 or 1. So let's let's keep track of these and now let's think about what i to the fifth would be. i to the fifth is going to be i to the fourth times i. i to the fourth is just 1, right? We did that before. So i to the fifth is i. And we're going to do a few more of these um, in the hopes that you'll see the pattern here. i to the 6 is going to be i to the 4th times i squared. i to the 4th is just 1, so this is the same as i squared. Or i squared is a negative 1, if you remember from before. i to the 7th, maybe you'll, maybe you'll see it's i to the 4th times i cubed. So it's really just i cubed, because i to the 4th is 1. And i cubed, if you remember from up here, is negative i. i to the eighth, we'll do one or two more, and then if you don't see the pattern, I'll show you. i to the eighth is i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is just one times one, or one. So let's look at the pattern. We have, here's the pattern, we have i negative 1, negative i, 1, and the pattern repeats. i the same as this one, negative 1 is the same as that, negative i, 1. So I bet you can figure out that i to the ninth, if this pattern holds true, you should know what it is. And let's just look, let's rewrite it as i to the fourth times i to the fourth times i, or 1 times 1 times i. Right? Just like this. The next one should become negative 1. Let's just walk through three more and then we'll go over the general formula. 
i to the tenth is going to be i to the fourth times i to the fourth. I'll just quote it i squared, and i squared is negative one. i to the eleventh is i to the fourth. I'll rewrite I'll write it all out i times i to the fourth times i cubed. If you remember i cubed it's negative i. And I won't do it, but you can trust me or you can do it yourself to see that i to the twelfth will also be one. So the pattern is the pattern goes as follows. Let's rewrite it in red. I negative one negative I one. I negative one negative I one. And you guessed it again we have I negative one negative I one. And if we did I to the thirteenth, you can probably figure out what that is. So what are we doing? What's the general rule? Like if I gave you i to the 15th, or a giant number like i to the 150 even, we should be able to soon have a rule that will tell us exactly what that equals. And it is, there is a rule. The rule is based off of the multiples of 4. You may notice that this is every 4. And the power of the exponent. If you, let's think about what happens if you take 4 into 5 and we think about the remainder. 5 divided by 4 is 1, but the important thing is it has a remainder. So in blue, I'm going to write the remainders. In blue, when you do 4 into 5, you get a remainder of 1. When you take 4 into 6, you get a remainder of 2. When you take 4 into 7, a remainder of 3. 4 into 8, you get a remainder of 0. Right. When you take, and we'll explain what the purpose of the remainders in a minute, but let's just let's look at the pattern to make sure that we see the, the pattern involving the remainders. You take 4 into 9, you're going to get a remainder of 1. Right. 4 goes into 9 twice, but all we care about is the remainder of 1. 4 into 10 will give us a remainder of 2, 4 into 11, remainder of 3, 4 into 12 on a remainder of 0. So notice, the way that you, we could figure out what i to the 50th is, we could really just say, oh, div take 150 and divide that by 4, and you will get, if you take 4 into 150, you're going to get 37, and that's going to give you a remainder of 2. Right, it'll give you a remainder of 2. So i to the 50th is the same as i squared. i squared is negative 1. Okay. So just to try to put the pattern together, i to any power is exactly the same as that power if you divide it by 4 and you only care about the remainder. I to, and if you look at it, it worked in this pattern here. I to the 7th, divide that by 4, you have a remainder of 3. I to the 7th is a, the same as I to the 3rd, which is negative I. So let's now practice some problems with this rule. Let's simplify these three powers of I. I to the 16th, I to the 21st, I to the 24th, and maybe we'll do some other practice. So remember, the rule is divide the exponent by 4, and all that you care about is this remainder. And I to the 16th is exactly the same as I to the 0. I to the 0 is 1. Remember, anything to the 0 is 1. I to the 21st, you know the deal. Take 4 into 21. All that we care about is the remainder. And I to the 21st is the same as I to the 1st. So I to the 21st is I. I to the 124th, you know it. Take 4 into 124. You can probably see that this is going to go in there evenly. And it'll be remainder of 0, I to the 0, or 1. Okay, let's try two more problems so that we get some other powers of i in there. i to the 27th, just take 4 into 27, 
And again, all we care about is that remainder. Therefore, I to the 27th is equivalent to I to the 3rd. Now, you, you have to remember I to the 3rd ends up being I squared times I, and I squared is negative 1. You do just need to know that, you really just kind of have to know or be able to derive the fact that I to the 0 is 1. I squared is negative 1. I to the first is obviously I. I cubed is negative I. Right? You do need to know this. And if you can just remember that I is a square root of negative 1, these other things can be derived from the stuff we did at the beginning. All right, so I to the, I to the 31st, you know the deal. Just take 4 into 31, and you get a remainder of 3 or i to the third which is negative i. <clears throat> okay that, that is how you simplify powers of i. To recap, divide the exponent by 4, take the remainder, and that is what you then have to translate into this. If you have i cubed, remember just rewrite that as negative i. Okay the next thing that we're going to look at is simplifying pure imaginary numbers. By pure imaginary numbers, I mean things like what you see on the screen on square root of negative 5, square root of negative 25. And I'm saying pure imaginary numbers to, distinguishing, to distinguish these from complex numbers, which you actually probably aren't aware of yet. That's something you will probably learn soon after this topic. So the square root of negative 5, there's only really one way that we could rewrite this. We could rewrite it as a square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5 or i root 5. Right, that's all that you can do with this. Square root of negative 25 is the same as square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25 or i times 5 and in general this is written 5i. So whenever you have a negative in a radical, and you have this imaginary number, the first thing to do is to separate the negative one, to get the i out. That's the first thing you should do. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to rewrite this as a square root of negative one times the square root of 75. And now we're going to rewrite this as i times now, and then we're going to simplify this like a normal radical. The square root of 25 times the square root of 3, and this becomes i times 5 times root 3, and by convention it's written 5i root 3. So again, step 1, extract the, the negative 1, make it an i, and then simplify the radical like normal. We'll do the same thing here. This is 3 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 12, which is 3i root 12, and this can be simplified, right? This is the same as 3i times root 4 times root 3. This becomes 2, so it's 2 times 3, or 6i root 3. Now, I went fast there on the end because that's some knowledge you hopefully already have, simplifying radicals. All right, let's try, um, let's try at least one more. Let's try to simplify 5 times the square root of negative um, 200. So take out the negative 1, so this becomes 5i root 200, and then we're going to simplify this like a, a, um, a radic regular radical, which is just 5i times root 100 times root 2, this becomes a 10, right? Root 100 is 10, so it's 50i root 2. Alright, so just a recap, when you are simplifying pure imaginary numbers like these, if your first job is to extract the negative one and then simplify it like normal. All right, the last thing I wanted to just just bring up um, is some things that many people don't realize about their uh, their graphing calculators. Most graphing calculators, like the TI-84, and I'm pretty sure the 83, and I'm sure the 89, um, allow you to work with imaginary numbers. Unfortunately, I don't have an emulator to, to pop up on the screen, so I'm just going to kind of orally tell you real fast some ways that you could use your calculator to help you. Um, click on the mode button 
of your um, TI. And there should be a, a part that says real A plus BI. Um, and then there's another thing to the right that we don't care about. What you want to do is highlight this, right? And then hit enter. Once you've done that, you can now, that eye is what it, we've been working with. This is the eye we've been dealing with. Once you are in this mode, you can then find I on your calculator's um, pad. For the TI-84+, plus, it's above the um, period on the bottom there. So if you hit second dot, you're going to see an I on the uh, calculator screen. And then you can say, like, what is I to the seventh? And it will actually uh, simplify for you. All right. Um, you, you don't want to rely on your calculator too much because um, as soon as the power, like, if you wanted to simplify the I to the, like, some large power in your calculator, you're going to get rounding error, so it's not reliable. But it is kind of neat that your calculator actually does have a A plus BI mode where you can deal with imaginary numbers. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Um, remember, you can see, uh, you can get some free, uh, other free goodies on our website, mathwarehouse.com slash imaginary. All right. Thanks a lot.